Used to be a big thing. Now. And welcome to the 100 and Best Sister. Yep. Yay! Because we met our old Adventure Bunny. Whoop whoop! Before we start the first few things, just a little note before we get all the things is there's a lack of performance. That just means that we have had a lack of access to any first thing that we call our audience members. Hello, 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 hello everybody. Welcome to Adventures Wanted. What are we doing? What is this? This is a tabletop role-playing game. We are rolling dice and we are having fun. The characters to my left and to my right are playing actors. Performers are playing characters. These characters are members of the crew of the ship, the Spirit of the Horizon. The Spirit of the Horizon is a naval research vessel that has been forced into a strange new world after casting a spell for a mystical stone tablet that awoke an ancient god but also allowed them to teleport away. They are now in this strange new world trying to uncover what happens next and in doing so they roll dice and we see how well they achieve what they want to do. Let's go around the table, let people introduce themselves and then we'll dive back into the story. Uh, I'm Lee, I'm playing Zach, a halfling rogue and the uh, ship's acquisitions officer. I'm Kat, I'm playing Scarlet, who is a tiefling paladin, and who is the ship's chaplain. Excellent. I'm playing Chloe. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chloe, and I'm playing Melora, um, who is a half-elf bard, who is the ship's commander. Right, let's get you caught up to what's just happened, and I saved this for now so I can have a bit more time to explain it, because otherwise it will make it in no sense. So... The crew of the Spirit of the Horizon have been asked by a race called the Katafu, who are a race of uh, tall, purple, troll-like people, to help them with a problem in their temple. Uh, they needed help controlling a elemental force that has taken over the roof of their temple and has made it impossible for them to inhabit and work in their town. In doing so, they have climbed their way up this gigantic temple, seven stories high, eight if you count the roof, and in doing so, have managed to collect various items they need to complete this task, as well as face off a gigantic gold golem. It's shaped like the god of the, the, of the people. It, they managed to deal with this golem by Commander Relora turning into a giant T-Rex, grabbing it in its claws, smashing through the wall, and dropping down 70 feet to impact on the ground with it. That's what just happened. Uh, the other two are now hanging on the outside of the building. And first things first, Commander Relora, I need you to make a concentration check on your polymorph spell, 16 or higher. Sure. Uh, concentration, is, is that just a flat roll? It's constitution, it's constitution saving oh, sorry, throw. Sorry. 12. 12. So be, is, is that definitely how that works? Because yes. in the spell it says uh, it lasts for an hour or unless you reach zero hit points. This is true, but it's also con it's a concentration spell. Okay. And you took 30-odd points of damage by falling this far. You did get the girl underneath you, so it took the brunt of the damage, and it is destroyed. But you still took damage from the fall. Okay. As you land and as you take this damage, you <laughs> revert back to your normal self, standing on top of the golem. I presume still just wailing away at it because you're so angry with it. Um, no, she's seen. She's, she can see that it's dead, right? You can see that it's not moving anymore. They don't really die. But, but it's as, smashed. as much as they can be dead. It's dead. smashed, yes. Um, so she doesn't actually wail on it. She just screams. Okay. She screams incredibly loudly, and it's it's a scream that is about all of the things that she just said about how much she detests and has come to despise and hate the world that they are in and mm -hmm. the people that are in it and the sense of impossibility of getting home. And she just screams. As Laura screams, rain and thunder all around her in this most Blade Runner of moments howling as she, on the top of the body of this golden golem she has just crushed underneath her when she was in T-Rex form. We're back on the roof with you two. Can we see that? No. 
Okay, so hear we it. can just hear the scream. You, you, you see a T-Rex leap off a roof with a golem in its jaws. You, they disappear. There's a loud thunk, and you just hear Rilora's voice going, ah, really, really loudly. But different to that, but yeah. Okay, how do you do it? I, I would worry about being too loud. <laughs> Is it definitely a scream of rage rather than a scream of pain? Yeah. It's, okay, it's good. definitely... Now, I need rage. to hear both of those to know which one it sounds like. <laughs> okay, well, a scream of pain would be... <laughs> but longer. Yes. A scream of rage is more... <laughs> That's what you hear. Excellent. One of them. Like yeah. I said, I thought that might be a bit loud. No, they seem fine. For where we are. <laughs> That's what you hear. Uh, Captain, I think your service is uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna <laughs> climb back around the wall and in the hole, in through the hole into the back into the room that had the sure. gold in it. Uh, make an athletics check to make the climb. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah, you're fine. You make your way around inside, and as you walk inside, you see that like a good third of the wall is gone, and um, this the roof looks a bit precarious. Um, from the stairwell, a head pops up. It's the high priestess going, "Is it gone? What on earth was it?" Which, Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the big lizard thing. I know what the statue was. Well, is. You was. You think she's a god. Right. Okay. This bears further thought. Do we still have all the items? <laughs> Where have they all gone? Bless you. Uh, a lot of them are downstairs now. They're, yeah, they'll be with me. I believe Rilora has most of them. Did she? <laughs> is she dead? I don't think so. Unbelievable. I am making my way back up the stairs. I was going to start making my way down the yeah, stairs. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> to meet up with you. You meet up at about the fourth floor. So you come back inside from the outside, mm -hmm. and you're halfway up and down the stairwell, and you, oh, oh, have that conversation. Are you all right? Yes. Is the rope still in place? I believe so, yes. Right. And I just walk past them, and I start walking up. Might need some chaplaincy. Perhaps feel that this is not the time. <laughs> There's really no time pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will catch up with her. Okay. Um, Lelora, I feel like we possibly need to have a talk about this. About what in particular, Scarlet? You seem excessively angry. And I realise... I think, to be honest, with all due respect, Scarlet, I'm precisely the right level of angry. Make a persuasion roll. Okay. Uh, 26. 26. You can counter that with insight if you want to. Laura's in a very stubborn mood. No. Nope. She has a point. Uh, I turn to Elohim. Ooh. Um... You know what's on the utmost level, yes? Yes, the aspect of our god is on the roof. It seems like it tried to attack me when I first opened the trap door. Were you carrying any of the items we had? Yes. What were you carrying? I was carrying the bowl, mm -hmm. and I was carrying two orbs. But you weren't carrying the sensor? Well, of course not, I've got it. <laughs> um, and I, oh, I had the ball of force as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I believe whoever enters the roof first will need to carry both items to calm the creature. Or all, all of the items. I think the sensor and the sensor and the bowl together should calm the creature into not destroying us immediately when we get onto the roof. Do you wish to do this? Do you think I should do this? You, you are the priestess of this god. Don't take this the wrong way, but you, you are, you have very clearly shown incredible power. I mean, what you did, not a clue. Don't even know how that begins to work. Um, so if someone is to take both the sensor and the bowl, mm -hmm. you think they should be okay? I believe that should calm it, yes. I, both items are calm elementals of particular types, and it is a representation of both of those forces. I believe the two combined should should calm it down, yes. Can I ask, if those two are enough to calm it, why are we taking the other items? Because it is still there. 
How it is we... still it is still controlling. It is sending it. It is sending its minions into the temple. How do we use them to control it to contain it? She, hang on, She's going through all her papers that she has with her. Just gonna have to find it. Okay. Um, right. It says here: if you enter the domain of the god, you must carry both the censer and the bowl. That way, it will not attack you. You must then use the orbs to weaken it and the ball of force to trap it. That's all it says. Right. I, 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 I don't know how mean to be. No, she's, ri she's really pissed. Um, You've just bit your chapter and just given you a, a very, not stern talking to, that's not fair, but like really tried to calm you down in a really positive way. She has really tried to calm me down in a mm -hmm. really positive way. She could do more of that if she wanted to. You could, like, you can, you could potentially try after I say this. Go for it. Um, it would honor us to have you involved in this, to have you central to this. I know that may sound strange, but from where we come from, from our culture, we can take up the ball of force and the orbs of lightning, but it would show the utmost honor to us as gods mm -hmm. for you to head first with the air and the water. Are you trying to deceive her? I guess I am. Well, do you, th do you really believe what you said? No, it's bullshit. Then there's a deception roll. But she's going to believe that we're gods. Roll as well, chaplain. You as well, then, if you want to. What, insights or...? Uh, yeah, insight rolls, please. Eight. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. I rolled a seven. She nods and goes, right, okay, you know that she's lying. You don't. You think, yeah, why not? Sounds, sounds reasonable. But um, um, you, you and I are both going, uh, fine, okay, that sounds like a sensible option, but uh, you're well aware this isn't. So she says, right, um, give me the bowl. The bowl. And um, you have two of the orbs and the ball of force, yeah. and you've got the other one, haven't you, little man? <laughs> Pat my pockets and go, uh... Oh, no, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, that, without them, I don't think we could have completed the ritual. Right, okay, let's head back to the roof and, um, and let's, uh, let's, let's handle this once and for all. Yes. So she, she makes her way up. You're all making your way up. Anyone want to say anything to anybody? Um, no? no? kind of want to snag Lelora and Penny. Do feel, feel free to. Yeah. Um, sort of. can't do this properly if you're not in your normal frame of mind. I see the quantity of anger that you have going on right now, but once all this is done, you can let it out. I'm trying to control until we are done. I will. Okay. Callahan hears this and sort of looks a bit confused, but you guys have your own special thing going on. She's not really involved. She I give her a big wink. <laughs> and she yeah. winks back. Yeah. <laughs> Winking's a thing for the cat of Uh-huh. So, you make your way up to the top. There's the open trap door, which is just billowing away open. And there's the closed one with the rope hanging off it. There are two more on either side of the room. Uh, so, compass points. Would it what would you like to do? to maybe give the chaplain one of the orbs so they're just within reach? Yes, that seems fair. And I take it out and I pass it over. So you're, you've got the ball of force in your bag and you've got the force and the lightning in your bag. Cool, the other hand's got both items. Cool. Um, you can't climb a rope to a trapdoor and then open it. That doesn't work. But um, she goes around the edges of the room and there's a slight divot in the side and pulls out ladders that were there all along. <laughs> Not obvious, remember? And there are now two ladders going up to two of the trapdoors. She puts her foot on one and says... I'm sorry, I've never done this before, so... Um, it's fine, you can do it. You've got this. You're a high priestess of this thing. Go for it. What will harm you? Roll a, percep roll a persuasion I'm check. I'm straight deception here. I don't believe any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll a deception check, I you monster. <laughs> you really mean it. Uh, 22. <laughs> yes, that seems accurate very well. <sighs> right. That's why I'm not calling 
Make your way to the step. She makes her way to the ladder, climbs up to the trap door. Holding both items, she takes a deep breath and opens the door. Holding both items, she steps up and disappears from sight. I say we follow. Um, two on one ladder, one on the other. Um, Who goes on which ladder? Um, I will follow the rest of the Okay, you take the other one. Sure, yeah. Cool, you make your way up, you open the trap door, and you're, you're now on the roof. It is, as you saw from the outside, a pure golden spire to this pinnacle. It's open at the top and you can see the sky above. And as you saw before, these storm clouds have amassed and a tendril is just sitting down in the middle here. The entire room that you're in is a thundercloud. You are literally inside a thundercloud. As you noted last time you were there, that caused electricity, that caused damage, it was rather painful. But Elahad is standing, is kneeling in front of the orb of lightning that you saw in the roof, the roof below you, in the room below you, which is now in the floor. She is kneeling with both items held in her shivering hands towards this face of her god in the clouds who is looking at her almost kindly. It's still gigantic, it's still terrifying, and it's still very much like an embodiment of the sky, but it doesn't seem like it's about to attack anyone or do anything maddening. She's raising these up here. Right. Everyone stand equidistant around the edge with your ball of lightning. I, I walk to position. Can I give inspiration to an NPC? Yeah, of course you can. Just before I get into position, I want to give inspiration to Elahan. Do. Um, am I saying her name right? Yeah, Elahan. El Elahan. Okay. Elahan, high priestess. Even though we've just met, I know, I am sure, there is greatness in you yet. So take heart and take strength and prepare yourself, and soon you'll see what lies. Ten at some point. <coughs> She'll need it in a second. Yep. <coughs> sure admit. This very much heartens her and you. I mean, she was so angry a second ago, and it seems like you have managed to calm her down a bit, which Still is good. a little bit of anger. Yeah, sure. But um, the crisis is over, if you will. Can we get that music back? Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's still there. Lovely. <laughs> uh, make it a bit louder. So. The High Priestess is sitting in the middle of the room holding these two items and the, the face of the god is looking at her kindly. It seems to be distracted, which is probably for the best considering what you're about to do. You all make your way to separate points around the edges of this roof. As it, so it curves up on the side, so there's very much a lip. There's no chance of you falling off or anything like that. At which point she says, I wrote it down. <laughs> you must triangulate and don't cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> that a reference to something, is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? You realise you have to use your magical ability to cast lightning from this ball in front of you. So, those of you who are magic users, yeah. uh, use your spell attack modifier and start the streams up. And those of you who aren't magic users. Oh, we'll get to you. <laughs> 16. Mm-hmm. Two lightning bolts come out and center, and there's a very definite, the face notices what's going on. It's not sure it's happy about this. You look at yours going, uh... You can focus your energy into it and try and do something. You never cast a spell in your entire life. It's not something you know how to do. Uh, can you roll me a d20 and add your uh, wisdom modifier, please? There we go. Do you still have that inspiration, or was that you? Oh, has it been 10 minutes since that point? When was, when was that? I was during the golem fight. Oh, yeah, it's been more than 10 minutes up and down the path, yeah. Eight. Eight. Nothing happens. There's a sort of... 
through it, but you don't manage to actually do anything, at which point the elemental starts to shiver. It's angry. It's frustrated. This is not what it wanted. It's, it, it's the, the power of the the power of the um, sensor and the bowl aren't working anymore. But Relora, but sorry, Elahan. manages to calm it again, powering, using her own magic to cast through these items as they as they calm it once again. And it seems to shrug off the lightning coursing through it once again. Wanna try again? There's no other option really, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, 11. Yep. Yeah. Suddenly, you've never done this before, you get the beam coming out of the ball in front of you. It's unbelievable. You've never. This is cool. Like magic is I awesome. Can do magic. <laughs> I can do magic. So these three beams, all meeting in the center. Elahan holding it in place, sweating, dripping off her brow. She turns to the three of you and goes, "What are you waiting for? Throw the ball of force." Anyone got any spare hands? No. Telekinesis. You want to cast a spell while casting a spell? Well, don't have any spare hands, do we? No, you don't. <laughs> Just confirm it again for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Suddenly, your bag starts to open. Nothing's there, oh. but something is opening your bag. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Various items start being tossed out like a pen. It doesn't. It doesn't understand us, does it? It didn't understand us. It. Nomi tried to speak to it before, but rolled a very low charisma check. Okay, I try to speak to it. Okay. I say, we mean you no harm. Throw the ball of force, and we'll be indebted. I mean, that's big words, but. The you orb. Throw the orb. Into. I assume into the center. Like she must have said. Did she gesture to where the orb was being thrown? Otherwise, no, no, she she's just being said a pretty she, poor she, priestess. She just said throw the orb. She's concentrating on not making this elemental kill all of you. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming you throw the orb, the orb of force into the center of the triangle. Yup. Um, she's starting to weaken. Do I um, like? Do I make us on, on saying throw it into the center? Yes, make that charisma check. It's a persuasion check. She's talking to nothing. Her, her bag seems to be doing weird things, and she's talking to nothing. You can both intelligent enough to work out what's going on if you want to. She's speaking to the s strange elemental being that tried to steal the Nick-Nick stuff off you earlier and um, slimed two of you. Yeah. 27. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it. Yeah. But you get a little... Oh. <laughs> you can hear, and the ball of force gets taken out, and it's just floating in midair above it, and she is weakening. As she weakens, you all take six points of lightning damage and ooh, nine points of thunder damage. There's a kroom around this entire building as this thing is not happy. It's worked out what's going on and it's not good. As the tiny air ooze elemental Oh God. Tries to throw the ball. It's just doom, doom, rolls across the floor and rolls around the center. What would you like to do? Is it, is it near... Um, yeah. You, Elohan. Elohan is can't move. You guys, if you move, are gonna. No, no but cross is, the is the orb near Elohan? Yes, it is near her. I'm basically just gonna say, <coughs> it's too late now. Just give up and throw the orb into the stream. To who? To Elohan. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion okay. check. Yeah, she rolled quite high as well. Oh, yeah, I rolled a three, so. yeah she, she, she tries to understand you, but she's too concentrated on her that's god right. and too concentrated on this moment and so, uh, everything is happening around her. Um, you can try and talk to it again, but the element is going to attack again <coughs> in a second if you don't do something. Um, um, I would try to keep talking to it. Okay, what do you say? I, would, I say, throw it into the center. We have much to promise you. Um, you take another nine points of damage from the lightning and the thunder as it crackles again 
once again, but then again, you see the orb picked up, raised, and once again, it tries to throw it on the floor. It throws the orb on the floor. You can't see it doing anything. You see it as the orb cracks. All three lightning bolts you have suddenly get sucked into the creature, which starts swirling in itself together. It's creating a funnel. There's lightning effects coming all around it in strange colors. No, no, it's just blue. There's lightning effects coming out of it as it slowly gets sucked down into the shattered remains of the ball and slowly it goes back into the ball, which magically reforms itself completely into a hole. But it's bigger and it's sparking with energy and it's sparkling with lightning right there in front of you. And as you see it, you realize it's exactly the same as the orb in the center of this chamber that's been it's clearly the source of power for mm -hmm. this temple and Elo Elohan drops the items sees this holy symbol of her god another one another item of immense power takes it to herself hugs it and collapses on the floor crying the skies are clear it's mid morning Would you like to do? <coughs> right. <coughs> um, I'm going to go over to Elahan um, and sort of put a hand on her shoulder and, and say, you have done wonderful things today, High Priestess. Well done. She looks up at you and says, thank you. She stands right. Um, well, there are some repairs to do, but this is more incredible a gift than we could ever have imagined. And she thanks all of you personally. Like, she goes in for hugs. This woman is, is overjoyed with all of you. I, I let her hug me, but my hands stay by my side. Mm -hmm. So she's hugging me, but I'm just not giving anything back. Okay. Give her a big hug. <laughs> nice. Good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. If you want a sleight of hand, you absolutely can. I'm not going to stop you, you monster. Uh, it's 21. Do you want to see if you see that? <laughs> yep. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, seven. It's not a lot in her pockets, really. Uh, it's, she's basically just carrying the stuff she's carrying with her. Um, yeah. You had a go. I had a go. It's yeah. Just, yeah. As you make your way, as you make your way down the stairs, Rilora, you feel a bump next to you, like something tried to sort of touch you. Um, I say thank you. I'm trying to think of what ooze elementals was like. It's sort of there's a sort of burbling noise. Again, it's completely invisible, so you have no idea what it is, what it looks like. No, but we briefly saw it. Yeah, when you take magic, it's a sort of two foot by... Oh, but no, but it became visible to everyone very briefly. Like yeah, Naomi it's, could see it's it. still not visible, though. It's staying invisible. Yeah, but I know what it looks like when yeah, it's... Yeah, it's about two foot, two foot tall. Um, air blob. I mean, if I'm going with the reference, mm -hmm. I know what I give it. What'd you give it? I've got two days of rations in my pocket. Do you now? <laughs> you give it some food? Yeah. You see the food <laughs> disappear into midair and it's gone. Um, I, I just say th thank you, you'll be remembered. Doesn't talk, so doesn't yeah. say anything. And I think it's going to follow you round. <laughs> oh, goody! I'll start that up for you. Okay, You thanks. now have a pet of an air spectre, that's what it is. <laughs> it's going to follow you around. Great. I mean, considering how Rolora feels about the, the races and the things that live in this world, that's brilliant. Um, it's really cute, though. She wants to talk to... <laughs> yeah. It can make itself visible. It just hasn't chosen to right now. She wants to talk to Elohan. Okay. Um, there is something we are looking for, something that is almost greater importance to us than um, our ship. Mm-hmm. 
I've been told of some places where there have been rumours of these. We are looking for pieces of a tablet. Pieces Soapstone. of a Soapstone. Broken tablet. into pieces uh, with some ancient language on it. And apparently some have heard rumours of places where pieces are. Have you heard any such rumours? How many pieces do you have? How many pieces do we have? About five? It's about oh. five, yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a handful. We know there are more. There is a piece in Karalia. Karalia is famous for, for this. The Sariki home island is, there is the sunken temple. The sunken temple contains a shard of a mystical artifact of great power, which is a soapstone tablet. This is, com has no one told you this before? It was mentioned to me. I just wanted to see if you knew any other places. Or had heard any other rumours. No. Um, you say you have a handful of pieces of this artefact? The, the, no one knows anything about it. It is a fairy tale. And we are gods. Indeed you are. As you walk back out of town, people are starting to come up the path, starting to come back up to see what has happened and realize that you have done this and there is al an almighty cheer coming up for you. On the way out of the bottom room, yeah. I'm lagging behind trying to bring some of that gold. Take as much as you like, yeah, fine. <laughs> There's whatever you want. You, they're not going to stop you. You have kind of earned it. Um, so whatever you find in those jars, we'll work out the numbers later. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. collect, you amass a significant amount of gold and gems <laughs> from these jars <laughs> as you leave the room. <laughs> So the you commander get, isn't going to instill any kind of discipline on this. She's you, fine with oh, this. Oh, I'm, I'm making sure that everyone else is basically... Your passive perception isn't high enough. You can't see him. <laughs> 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 None of you can see him. He's just done it. Um, but the two of you walk out with Elahan and are greeted by rapturous applause and cheers. And you've clearly done them a fantastic service and they couldn't be more happy. And, and I genuinely elated. couldn't care less. Yeah. Next you hear it. realizing that, that that's when Relora realizes it's following her around. Yep. Um, she, she just wants to walk straight back to the ship. Sure. Like she has no interest in staying here, seeing more of these people doing anything but go to Coralia. As you make your way back down to the dockyard. She, do, she does give uh, Scarlet a nod though before she walks off um, mm -hmm. and she by a message so it's psychic and no one else hears says um Yes, I'm angry, but we need something to give us force to get home. And then she walks off. Mm -hmm. Do you go with her or do you stay up? Um, I would probably be heading back in the direction of the ship, probably slower, mm -hmm. kind of being nice to these people, because mm -hmm. Lelora is not in a good state to, and <laughs> sticky hands here is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he's, he's rejoined you. He's clearly oh. having a gay old time. His pockets are chinking. Uh, oh, maybe gems, I think. Chinking. <laughs> so the two of you are making your way down. You're yeah. shaking hands, saying hello to people. I mean, if they want to. Yeah. I'm not going to say that we're gods, but we have done them a favour. Mm -hmm. uh, make a perception check, both of you. Oh, perfect, hey. perfect. <laughs> just out of just just out of other people's earshot, but you can still hear it. You hear Elahan excitedly telling some people, "A giant lizard, yes, a giant lizard. I know, a statue. I know." <laughs> and I just go, "Yeah, it was so tall." <laughs> <laughs> just join in. <laughs> and I just turn this into like one of those grandiose tales. It was taller than it was. It was in a couple of weeks, there will be a statue of a giant lizard <laughs> in the centre of this town. And that's just what's going to happen now. It's decided. Done. You make your way back to the ship. Um, it is still in the harbour. It is in no fit state for sale. If anything, it looks worse. Um, the What Mongwao has been organising with the other builders is to remove any bit of the ship that is unusable retain the bits that are and then start filling in when you arrive they've removed a lot of it the ship is currently a skeleton 
Mm -hmm. The keel has been fixed. They managed to do that. But it's a skeleton, ribs, some bits, but generally speaking, it is they're rebuilding most of the ship. And the crew just in town? The crew are hanging around the various barrows. A lot of them are sitting around just waiting. There's not a lot of space. Um, They're just sat watching, kind of taking in the fact that they've now (coughs) killed a god, the ship's nearly been destroyed, but now they've clearly found someone who'll help them, someone who'll be kind in a world that hasn't been very kind to them so far. Who seems in charge out of the party? Mongwell, the builder. Mongwell. I want to go up to him. Mm Mm-hmm. How long do you think this process will take? Another week, maybe two. Is there anything we can do to speed it up? I... We have magic casters, we With have... the greatest of respect. This is not a job that requires speed. This is a job that requires reverence. And time. Best to do it properly. Than not do it at all. I'm so angry that I have to walk away because if I stay, I'm going to say stuff I regret Mm -hmm. to him. So I walk off without saying anything to him. And you guys arrive down and see this situation. How do you feel about it? Nothing of this size, and certainly nothing that could travel as far as this can, no. We mostly use canoe. <laughs> I do mention to him that the tools in the places should be accessible now. He nods and says, good, <laughs> I can make this somewhat faster, but these things take time. Yes, ma'am. As you're walking away from him, you see a uh, a lot of the command structure, so Joe's in the head of the yeah. Marines and a lot of those people are milling around one of the barrows. It seems to be where everyone's kind of congregated. You assume that's where Golem would be. Right, I want to go see what's in the barrow. Sure. You go down into the barrow and uh, Golem is sat there behind a table that is clearly his table that's been taken off the ship and put in there. <laughs> um, if anything, this barrow looks a lot like his captain's cabin. It's almost like he's sort of taken everything out of it and gone, right, get rid of it, and then put all the important bits in. Chance he's not there. She wouldn't fit in the door, but you've not seen it. Mm-hmm. But it's very much the captain's cabin in a slightly different place, which is a bit odd. All the pieces of the tablet are there. There are five. Okay. Uh, I go up to the captain. Mm-hmm. I say, Captain. How did it go? We did what they wanted. Good. Very good. As soon as the ship is seaworthy, we should go and find somewhere called Coralia. Coralia. Where are the other pieces? Another piece. I don't know how many there are left to find. Neither do I. It looks like there are certain number of pieces left to go but we are making quite remarkable progress all things considered what's wrong we define remarkable differently sir go on I simply do not consider this progress remarkable losing what, 75, 76 crew? Before we even seem to have any hope of getting home. That's not how I define remarkable. Laura. Over the past three weeks, we have fought countless threats. We have traveled all over this world, seeing the most remarkable and ridiculous things you could possibly imagine. Again, sir, respectfully, I disagree with your definition of remarkable. He slams the door of the barrow shut and says, now you listen, and you listen carefully. We've been in this world for three weeks, and in that time, yes, we've lost hands. This is a military ship. Lives are lost. 
every day. That's what they signed up for. That's what this job entails. I apologize that you can't see past that at the moment. I know you are not part of the military and this role is new to you. Please understand, this is what we do. And if I may be so bold, finding five pieces of a mystical tablet in a world that does not know the power it possesses is remarkable. You are doing a remarkable job. All members of this crew are doing a remarkable job. I chose the word remarkable exceptionally carefully. Every single one is pulling their weight in a way that I could not ever have possibly imagined. Through trials I could not have imagined. We are in charge of these men and women. We must give them something to work towards, to aspire to. May I be so bold to ask, sir, do you deem the notion of us getting home an aspiration? It is, he steps back, it is. He's hesitated, I leave. He's holding the door closed. What, physically? Yes. Fuck, I've got enough spell points, I don't mention door out. Cool. Don't mention door out. Yeah. and looks at you disappearing and goes, hmm. Very well. Where do you go? I'm simply teleporting to the other side of the door just so that I can then walk through Kay. the area. Yeah. You guys see her leave what you presume is the captain's quarters at this point in time. Do you want to do or say anything? She's clearly still not happy. No? I saw the set kind of and just kind of a little bit close to me just like someone just following so that I can mutter into her ear essentially. Mm -hmm. As you walk down the dock, do you want to walk and watch what they're doing? Sit on the end? Where do you want to end up? Looking at the sea, I'd rather not look at what they're doing mm -hmm. because they're taking too long and they don't think time matters. I mean, that is the fundamental thing that matters. Mm -hmm. So just somewhere that's got a tiny bit of privacy or is a little bit away from others. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just looking at the sea. Even if that's just simply angling herself. Yeah, that's fine. You are effectively alone. Something tries to nestle under your arm. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of nestle in. Do better. No. I don't. I don't like force it away. Mm -hmm. I don't like make any movement that's a rejection. Mm -hmm but I don't, like, open up space for it. Touches on your shoulder. Just sits there. Fine. And that's where we're going to end this hour of Adventures Wanted. Thank you very much.
Um, I'll do some plugging. I haven't plugged all day because we've been running a bit over, but I'm not now, so <laughs> well, absolutely. Um, I'm a freelance theatre PR, but I'm not doing this, so I work on a bunch of different things. Um, I'm not going to pitch any specific show because um, they all always need more audience and need more people to see them. That's always the way with these things. So if you head to my website, which is Chris Hislop, that's H-I-S-L-O-P, sorry, C-H-R-I-S, my first name, so that, dot com, uh, I work on the 16 different shows at the Fringe this year. They run the gamut from oh, the physical comedy through um, stuff like this, interactive cult shows. Um, there's a whole variety in there, and uh, all of them are brilliant, and all of them could always do with more bums on seats, frankly. So mm -hmm. if anyone is looking for something to see over the next two weeks and wants something a bit different, because that's really what I like to work on, take a look, and you won't be disappointed. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us.